So last night I flew back from Arizona. I was in Sedona this weekend at a Sony event and we were there to work with the new 24 millimeter F 1.4 G Master lens, which was really fun. And I have done a video on this lens before. I was at the announcement in San Francisco and I showed you guys what that lens is capable of. But one of the things that we did not get a chance to do in San Francisco was do astrophotography. And the reason that's important is because this lens is actually designed specifically to do astrophotography with, or that would Say that that's one of its traits. It's actually a very versatile lens and I'm really excited about this lens. Like I said, I got to use it in San Francisco and it is not only, I think, one of the best lenses that came out this year or <laughs> recently for that matter. It is probably my favorite lens on the Sony E-mount system. I don't own one yet, but I've gotten to use it twice now and at this price point, the amount of versatility you get out of this lens is just amazing. Now, I have another video that I'm going to release next and in the next video, we're going, I'll show you the Sedona trip and who all was there and the fun that we had and all that. That. But I want to talk about some technical things in this video because they're really important in understanding what this lens will do. And lens design is something that is very fascinating to me. And I've talked a lot about that in other videos. And what's interesting about it is that lens design, in a scientific sense, it's like anything else in photography. There is no perfect lens. And you have all these distortions and aberrations that come into play when you are designing a lens. And like everything else in photography, generally when you're correcting one thing, it means you've got to give up something else. And that could be size or portability or there's a number of things. Cost goes into that. And so it's really interesting to see what Sony have done. And I think in this video, you'll get to see that in the sense of astrophotography. Another thing about lens design is a lot of times photographers tend to glaze over when we talk about this because we're looking at like test charts that are photographed in a very clinical way where you see the line pairs and you're looking for resolution and MTF chart stuff. And those are not real world uh, examples. And all all the astro stuff really is. Now, a disclaimer, I am not an astrophotographer. I live in an area with a lot of light pollution and it's something that I've never done until this weekend. And a lot of the people that were there really are not experienced with it either. But Sony brought two people along that were just fantastic. Jose Salgado, I will link up to both these individuals below. Jose's incredible. Uh, he does a lot of time-lapse stuff, all nighttime photography. He's just, he's a brilliant photographer. And then also my new buddy, Stan Moniz, who I talked about in the last video. And Stan is a trip. He's incredibly talented. and. Uh, uh, I'm going to show them in the next video. So they were there to coach us along and help us. And while my images are not the best astro photos ever made, they do prove the point that we're trying to make here when we're going to show you this lens. So if we look at an image that was made on the Sigma 24 millimeter art lens, this is a wide open at f1.4. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom in. We're gonna totally pixel peep here. And I'm going to show you that when you look at the little pinpoints of light here, especially in the corners, you're gonna see that they have little, little wings on them. They look like bird wings. This is known as sagittal coma flare. And this is actually an aberration that happens in the lens. And it has to deal with the way that light is coming into the lens and being refracted. And then when it gets to the sensor, and it's really difficult to control little pinpoints of light like that. Now they do go away when you stop the lens down. If I go down to F 2.8 or even smaller than that, they will go away. But the problem there is having the ability to shoot this lens wide open. When you're shooting a night sky, the light is low. So you've got restrictions of ISO performance and then you also have a limit on how long the shutter can be open because the earth is rotating. You're going to perceive the sky is moving. That's how we do star trails. And if you're doing star trails, this is not a problem because it's all going to blur itself out. But if you're trying to freeze the motion, it's really difficult to get sharp pinpoint stars when you have everything frozen in focus. And that is something that will affect the performance of the image overall. Now, up until recently, there was no lens that did not do this. This was as good as it got. And you just kind of learned how to live with it. And of course, there's other things like composition and lighting and how you're interpreting the, the scene that you're shooting that, you know, it probably is not something that most people would notice. This is something that geeky photographers like you and me, hopefully you, definitely me, would notice. And so what's interesting is the Sony, uh, sorry, the Sigma lens is a, it's an inexpensive alternative. Uh, does this mean it's a bad lens? No, not at all. It just doesn't do this well. It does a lot of other things really well. And I will talk about this lens more down the road. What also is interesting is on the Zeiss Otis, and this is a very expensive lens. 
let me repeat that. It is a very expensive lens. This is a $5,000 plus lens. Uh, I do not own it. I am borrowing this right now. But what's interesting is if I pull up images that were taken on the 28 millimeter Zeiss, and of course this is a slight difference in focal length, but you're going to see that we have the same issue. It looks like they look slightly different. And it looks like Zeiss has found a way to probably take care of this a little bit better, but they still are kind of glumpy shapes. And what we want is little fine pinpoints. Now what I want to show you is we go over to the Sony lens and this was really interesting because I thought at least one of these other lenses would perform really well. But if we go over to the FE 24 millimeter, and we'll go back to the same shot. If I zoom in on this and we take this up really big, you can see that they don't have the bird wings. We don't have the sagittal flare, sorry, the sagittal coma flare in the same way. And so it's really impressive to work with this lens. Uh, it is just amazing. The other thing that I love about the Sony lens is it's very versatile as well. And so you can do, like if you really want the shallow depth of field portraits of people, you know, we wouldn't get too close, it is a wide angle, but if you wanted to do an environmental thing, it has an incredible looking depth of field. The bokeh is amazing. And I covered all that in the other video, and it really is a beautiful lens, and this is one I'm going to be adding uh, to my gear very soon. Uh, it just came out and it's a little bit hard to get right now, but it is just, it's its a fantastic lens. Um, it's interesting at these events, we end up shooting with a lot of stuff and I did bring my IR camera or my full spectrum conversion camera. I was shooting a lot of infrared as well and you'll see that in the next video. Um, but it, you know, you always kind of come back to the 24 millimeter because it's so versatile and it's so good at so many things. And by the way, one other thing that I want to show you, and this is really nerdy and it probably isn't that big of a deal, but it was a huge deal to me and I was just really really blown away by this. So we were out shooting and I did a couple where I, I wasn't using anything in a foreground. So I didn't have trees or anything like that. I was just shooting pretty much straight up into the Milky Way. And this was done on the Zeiss lens. And later when we came back, I had Stan come over because we were looking for the sagittal coma flare issues. And I zoomed in and he goes, oh my God, you got Andromeda. So if you look right here, that right here, this thing, that's a galaxy, that's Andromeda. And supposedly we're gonna like collide with it in like, I don't know, like 4 billion years or something like that. But the fact that a galaxy that's fairly far away, I don't know, maybe because I'm new to Astro, this is just so exciting to me, that that shows up on a 24 millimeter lens, or actually in this case a 28, but still a wide angle lens shooting at night, and it's up here if you look at the full picture. It's just amazing to me. And it's like, as soon as I found that, I'm like, well, I wanna know more. And obviously I don't know the constellations and Pleiades, and I mean, I can find that and Orion, but everything else kind of loses me. And those guys were like, way deep into this stuff. So you'll see all that in the next video, so be prepared. Just wanted to do a super quick tech thing. I wanna thank Sony for bringing me out to this trip. It was amazing. I made a lot of new friends. You're gonna see everybody in the next video. So if you have any questions on the technical stuff on this lens, please drop me a comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later. Bye.